Hello everybody. Uh, actually, this is the second try on this video. Uh, July 22nd, Happy Dog Farm, neighbor Al here. Uh, filled my other memory chip. Anyway, uh, here I am looking at the floor, working on what I'm going to do. And back in the day when I used to design bigger things and try to make them work, um, there was a point where you were get a formal stop, make sure it meets the requirements. Uh, and I'm doing that. And I'm doing that kind of in a way that won't be terribly disruptive. Uh, one, I, before I start, I want to do a shout out to two people I'm very grateful for. Um, one, grateful to Diane Flint, Froggy Ridge Cider in Virginia. Thank you, Diane. A great cider. You should check her out. Um, several years ago, she gave me a cook's tour of her custom process built cider house tasting room um, very purpose built that's so 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 important secondly to commander Gary Thomas United States Coast Guard retired um, who always signs off on his email that technology should serve people not people serving technology and Gary I'm sorry I kind of got carried away I started letting the technology lead the process very bad of me. Okay, what's going on here? One thing I was doing was checking form, fit, and function, gearhead activities, and I was marking the location of the trench drains, the sump, and the sink drains on the floor. I wanted to make sure everything was really going to fit. I just used surveyors, you know, your normal pavement marking spray to do this and when I stepped back I said wait a minute I got a problem here now I remembered some of the things that Diane had in hers she had a loading dock she had a pressing area she had a fermentation area and then she had the tasting room you know and the bottler was in the fermentary so she had a production area uh, so loading dock Pressing, production, tasting room. Very linear process oriented setup. Um, what the technology that caught my eye, you know, sounds like simple, you know, it's technology though, is the use of trench drains as opposed to traditional round drains, you know, to really catch the volume of fluid that's coming out there so you can squeegee the floor. She had her water heater and a lot of technology that doesn't need to take up floor space bolted up on the walls and she had a flow through that it went from the loading dock into the the tasting room sort of environment okay and I was trying to implement that but I got caught up with this trench strain thing I don't know why I got fixated on it and I broke myself out of it when I sprayed on the floor now this is this space here is maybe Oh, a fifth of what Diane has up to her tasting room. I have no tasting room. But my plan had been this side here, ignore those that barn wood there because that's going to get ripped off. That half of the space here is going to be the pressing area. This is where product comes in to get pressed. The press will probably be done out in the barn proper. It's a messy process. But I could store the press in here. I would have a place for the water system, which would be up high, a, a, a tank to hold chlorinated water. But the big thing being is the entryway is as close to the barn aisle and the main bar entrance as possible. That's really important from using my little tractor for backing in and out with heavy stuff like barrels. Okay. Cool, we, th we say. Why do I have a trench drain here? Now this other side, oh, I digress. This other side over here was going to be the production area. And the idea that tanks could be against that wall, and that's open now, but that's actually going to be a closed wall. And they could line the walls there. Then why is the trench drain there? It doesn't make any sense. Along the outside wall, which is about 19 feet long, would be, is my, I have upstairs a, um, 
a really nice countertop unit that was salvaged. Um, got left here and I've commandeered it. And that countertop will run along as much as I can along the outside wall. So it does need to have sink drains available to it. Suddenly it kind of it dawned on me by going through this exercise that having, you know, this looks really nice if all you're concerned about is the plumbing being happy. Is the plumbing happy? But the plumbing's job is to make it easy for me to wash down my tanks, drain them as short a distance as possible, and get that fluid into the sump and out of here. Well, that doesn't work. Really, those trenches should be in front of the tank. So when the tank kicks out, it goes a short distance into the trench, into the sump. And if the trenches are going to be over there, I question why I have this really big one over here when I probably could suffice with sink drains over here. I'll certainly be cleaning stuff over here, but I'll be cleaning it at the counter. Um, so what I, what I guess I'm coming around full circle to say is I have very little space. I have to focus on what's my process for bringing stuff in and getting it out. Obviously, you know, I don't have an exit here. That wall, maybe someday if Dottie doesn't use her shop anymore, I'll cut that wall, I'll door in that wall, and that would become a tasting room separate and apart from this space, which would actually be really sweet. It ain't going to happen. Anyway, um, but Diane's model was very linear, coming in one end, going through to the tasting room. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do here is I haven't done digging up the floor yet. This seemed like a really good time to stop. It's warming up. I'm tired, and I'm really glad I did this. Stop and say, Am I going down the right path? I think I've chosen the right technology. I, I have no regrets. Um, the trench drains are the right technology. They capture large volumes. Uh, they're easy to clean out. Um, they're very strong. These are I, I can I'll be able to put a pallet jack over these and not break them. So that is the appropriate technology. The sump well is the appropriate technology. But was I implementing it properly? I'm having my doubts. In fact, I'm going to say adamantly, no, I wasn't. What I believe I need to do now is look at my drain plan. If I take the sump and stick it in that corner, that will free up what I think is more valuable real estate there. Um, that's, that's a big deal. If I put trench drains at right angles, to, to capture fluid maybe four feet out, I'll measure my tanks and some other tanks, but if I took four feet out feeding into the corner drain and I have sink drains going over there to the sump, um, I'm ahead of the game because that real estate where I'm coming in won't be tied up with that. Um, in fact, I could make that whole section right there a, uh, a water section. I could put the, um, I could mount the hot water heater. It's going to be a small electric one. Mount that up on the wall. I could put that there. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I could, but that space is not going to be so important as I think that space would be. Walking right in, it's breaking up the wall quite a bit. Um, corners. I'm not big fond of corners because if you put a counter in there, you're always reaching across trying to get to stuff. Uh, not so good. The other thing is I could put a sink in that corner right above the sump. I don't even need a drain. It just goes into the sump. So um, if you're thinking about doing this or you got projects at home, I would encourage you before you buy in on your solutions, ask yourself what are your activities? What do you plan to do? And what's your process? Uh, I think you'll be a lot less frustrated and, and tend to be less disappointed with your outcomes. Um, anyway, my process will be fruit will be coming in through those doors. That's my, you know, 
loading space. And that's where juice, if I get fortunate enough to make a quantity, will be going out there because I can bring a trailer in here and fill the barrels on the trailer and just go straight back out again. That section there will be a lockable but sliding barn door so it does not take up any footprint whatsoever. It slides open, it slides closed, and then it locks. So there I have a very large opening that gives me easy ingress and egress, get in, get out, to my cider space, which frankly is also going to be a shop space. It's going to be big enough if I need to do some welding or whatnot, I can put the, the welders on wheels, bring it in there, do my work, put it away. Then I'll probably press in there. I can bring the juice in here against the back wall will be my lab and domestic. You know, I can, I can hang in the corner. I can hang uh, cloth to dry. I'd be able to wash stuff there. My water supply is a standpipe in the tack room. Most likely I will get the smallest intermediate bulk container, IBC, I can. Fill it there, dose it with chlorine, and then have a pump. I'll probably have to get a stainless steel pump to handle that. And that will provide me with chlorinated water. So uh, I have uh, necessary sanitation for handling food stuff and keeping mold and stuff out. Um, and then the tanks will be here. I can, when I time to clean the tank, flush the lees, open the valve, it will dump into uh, the trench drain, which will capture the fluid and send it off to La La Land. So I'm showing you a, a mistake avoided and my process for avoiding the mistake. I think I had a good idea. I don't regret it one iota, but I think when I gave it the light of day test, um, I found it shortcomings and I did everything right. Um, so my proof of concept, but with spray paint on the floor, said, whoa, Al, stop, back up. You got all the right parts, but you're putting them together wrong. So, um, not really humble pie. Maybe a Pop-Tart? Yeah, not as healthy as it should have been. But that's the update for today from Happy Dog Farm. I hope you found it useful in your own endeavors for whatever you might be doing. But certainly if you're thinking about building a cider room, my, my first thing I would really recommend you do, Gary Thomas and Diane certainly did it working with an architect, is what's your process going to be? What's your workflow going to be? Don't be disappointed because you built something that looked nice, but it didn't serve the outcome. It didn't serve you. It served itself. Trench drains laying parallel on the floor like that, golly gosh, that looks nice, but that actually does, would not have served me. I would have had fluid all over the floor, and I'd be trying to corral it into the trench drains. The other part of it, too, is the way the trench drains were set up. I would have had a lot of slope in my floor in places I didn't want slope. So stuff like that. So that's all from today. It's a warm, sunny Sunday. Um, I think I hear my buckwheat germinating. That would be wonderful in the warm sun. And we've had some good rain. We might get a little bit more rain later this week. Uh, we're blessed. It's a wonderful thing. So don't want to forget Diane Flint, Gary Thomas. Uh, shout out to you guys. Thank you very much for uh, walking the talk and teaching me stuff, whether you meant to or not. Um, thank you very much. Everybody have a great day, and we'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.